If you remember, this whole machine was really designed for cutting metal with a plasma torch. But I want to swap the torch for a router, so I can cut timber instead. Now most things remain the same, but one of the main differences is the Z-axis. That's the one that goes up and down. On a plasma machine, it doesn't have to be very rigid, because your plasma torch shouldn't be touching anything. But if it does, then something's not quite right. The torch tip should run around just above the surface of the material. But of course, a router tip is buried in the material, and so it has to be held much more rigidly. After setting up the carriage and adjusting the bearings correctly, there's still play forward and backwards. So that's the challenge, how to remove that play simply and cheaply without interfering with the movement that it still needs to do. There are probably lots of ways of doing this, but um, this way was by far the simplest that we came up with. The plan is to position a stiff bar behind the carriage and using a pair of bearings on it to stop the top of the carriage moving. <laughs> it's not even easy to explain the problem, but we did get there, so bear with me and it might become clear. This is quite interesting. In order to um, accurately position the bearings, I made an eccentric spacer. I decided eccentric spacers had to be easier to make than regular ones because having the hole off center is actually the point of the project and not just a mistake. <laughs> and so it proved. I was quite pleased with that, but in fact, it was easier to hold the bearings parallel by making up a stack of flat spaces instead, and so that's what I did. And I secured them to the top of the carriage. The challenge then was to position the angle iron. I cut out a pair of brackets. Bought it to the side carriages and that worked up to a point. <laughs> yes. This goes on. Yeah. On there. And on this one. And with a bit of luck, this will be in the right place for the angle iron. <laughs> what are the chances? <laughs> it works, but the problem is it doesn't stop it going in and out, which was the whole point. So, back to the drawing board. <laughs> we can start breeding them, maybe. Blub, blub, blub. So, I made another pair and reorientated the bearings, and that worked much better. but the brackets were in the way of the limit switches and also there was nowhere to attach the cable train trough.
So I cut off those brackets again and I cut out this shape instead. And that worked really well. There's just no play in the carriage anymore, and yet it can still move about. And that was just down to increasing the triangulation, which fortunately I was able to do without making new carriages turned out a lot simpler than I had been fearing. Now I still can't attach the router because I'm still waiting for the actual Z rail system to arrive. The actual bit that goes up and down with the router on it. So in the meantime um, we got on with a couple of other jobs. We put a bolt halfway along the Y rails attached to the main frame to stop any flexing of them. Not that there's much chance of that, but it was easy to do and it might be helpful. And then I got on with making a stand for the computer monitor. All I did was drill a hole in the end of one of the rails and drop my bent pipe into it. Okay, let's do that again. So, it was pretty simple, but it does seem to work fine. Can't wait now for the next step. 